Hey Light Warriors, welcome back to the channel. My name is Serafina Nightingale, and today we are getting some messages from Ariane Rod about war mentality. Pipsqueak is in the background now and he is adorable. I did ask if he would be willing to join us today because today is going to be a little bit of a heavier topic. I knew I, I needed to do this channeling. I've been sitting on it for a little while. One thing that Ariane Rod has been really pushing for me to understand lately is the necessity of slowing things down, of giving events in tower time, time and space to breathe and be processed before doing channelings on them. So that is why I am a little bit later on this. I did do a couple of Instagram videos. I do daily tarot pulls over there if you're interested. Before we jump into it, I did just want to call attention to the fact that this is a very difficult topic to talk about. There are a lot of emotions that are arising from a lot of different perspectives on this issue. And my intention is to do the nuance justice while also keeping a very firm eye and a very clear vision on where we are headed as a collective species. I know the energies that are in the air right now are absolutely out of control, tense, stressful, and I'm just speaking as someone who has distance, like physical distance between myself and the situation. So I can only imagine the fear, the anxiety that is taking place in both of these two areas. With respect for that and with a full understanding and empathy for the suffering that is taking place on both sides of this issue, I do want to orient the majority of this conversation towards where we are headed as a collective anchoring in these new earth energies, these new way energies, and making sure that we are not getting stuck in the old paradigm because fellow light warriors we are very much in one of those choice points in tower time one of those moments where the decision that we choose to make the energies that we choose to anchor into our collective really 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 matter and so we will get into all of that another thing i wanted to call attention to it's funny you'll the, the previous couple of minutes here might have been a little bit choppy. My dog, Pipsqueak, was barking and I just had such a visceral, emotional reaction to his barking. I got really, really mad at him. Sorry, buddy. Um, now, his barking gets under my skin many a times, but I have been... Not that I've been like crazy angry lately, but I have noticed that my temper has been spiking a little bit. Like I, situations that would normally provoke anger that I would very easily move through are now culminating in a very intense way. And I, you know, we are a collective uh, and being so means that when something energetically happens in one part of the world, it ripples out and impacts all of us. And so... There is collective grief happening, collective empathy taking place, but also a heightened collective sense of anger, of retribution, of us versus them mentality. Now to flip this on its head a little bit, thank you, Ariane Rod. Uh, she's all about flipping things on their head. To flip things on their head, those moments of intense outbursts, intense anger that you're feeling are tests, choice points, but also opportunities. They are opportunities for us to choose something new, to sit with and process the old triggers that are being triggered to the surface, and then intentionally make different choices. So as tense and upsetting and frustrating of a time in the human history and tower time that we are currently facing, we can also choose and we should be choosing to see this from a higher perspective in that it is an opportunity. It is an opportunity to anchor in something new. And so I have a feeling that is what the majority of today's message is going to be centered around. Let's get straight into the cards and into my notes here. The first thing, the first card I got. So I grabbed my animal oracle because I wanted to see what animal archetype would come through for today. And I flipped the deck over saw the stingray on the bottom and something about it, I didn't know the definition, but something about it just really resonated. The imagery of it, I was like, this is it. This is the card. This is what we're doing. So let's take a second to admire the artwork here. If it's going to focus. 
And I want to take a minute here to read the book definition because like I said, the image resonated and then I read this and I was like, oh yeah, no, this is how she wants us to start this. So Stingray, developing confidence, sense of self, or a spine. Remember, this is going to be titled The Bravery of Choosing Peace. The Stingray card represents a pivotal point in personal growth. The moment has come when the Stingray must decide between the old, easy, comfortable, and familiar, and the new, challenging, uncomfortable, and unfamiliar. Pressure... Pressure from family and friends makes the decision even more complicated. No matter what choice is made now, it's inevitable that this dilemma will surface again and again, as the force of Dharma growing within the stingray is too strong to ignore. When it's in balance, it's eager and it wants to grow. When it's out of balance, it blames others and quits. To bring into balance, move through the discomfort. Come on. It's too good. It's too good. One particular piece of this really, really stu stood out to me. I mean, the whole thing is, if I was going to summarize the entirety of this video into like a little paragraph here, that is, that is what this is. This is so spot on to everything that I have been feeling from her. But one particular thing really stood out to me. It's inevitable that this dilemma will surface again and again as the force of Dharma growing within the stingray is too strong to ignore. We are meant to face this, this shadow, this collective shadow. And specifically, it is the us versus them mentality, the dogmatic attachment mentality. This is a pattern that has been repeating multiple times. In America, we will be faced with this yet again in the next coming months here during our next presidential election cycle. Everyone in the world right now has been and will continue to be faced with the temptation to fall backwards into the us versus them mentality. It is one of the most aggressive energetic pulls that we have as a species still. It is very core to our animal brains, which is, you know, Ariane Red has been explaining this to me as we've been partnering together here that the upgrades and the changes we are undergoing are absolutely spiritual, mental, 1000% in the emotional, energetic body, but they're also taking place in the physical body. Things are changing for us. A really big element of this is our ability to no longer be controlled by the animal impulses that we have on a physical level. And so choosing peace, and I, I do want to talk about what I mean by choosing peace, because I think a lot of people have the perception that choosing peace is a choice of inaction. And that is very much an inaccurate depiction of what she is asking us to do in this time. So we will get there. But the bravery that is required to choose peace in this time is very much flying in the face of all all of our programming, like our physical, biological, human programming, and then also the societal conditioned, historical millennia of human history compounding upon our heads programming. We have been, there is, you know, I keep talking about how when we choose something new, we're crafting a new neural pathway in the brain of the human collective. This rut is so deep, so deep. And this is also why just choosing something new once is not enough. This is one of the patterns of healing and change that is going to take a tremendous amount of repetition, a tremendous amount of really pouring your heart and soul into this. It's another reason why, and she's wanting me to clarify now, when we say choosing a new way, choosing peace instead of feeding into the war mentality, the us versus them mentality. This is not something you do in passing. This is not something that, oh yeah, I choose peace. And it's also not something that you choose because you don't know what else to choose, right? Because I, I can feel that stream of consciousness in the collective of, I don't know what the right thing to do is, so I'm just gonna outwardly say peace because I feel stuck. That's also, while she has respect for the potential for that to happen to us, that is also not where we're meant to stay with this energy. She's asking us to rise to the occasion, to graduate, to step into a higher way and to anchor in some new energies. In order to do that, you will have to passionately throw yourself into the energy of peace. 
passionately throw yourself into the energy of empathy. This is also where the importance of bearing witness absolutely comes into place. And I, I know we will have to exercise discretion about how much we can handle, but we live in an era where we have the ability to see firsthand the consequences of the actions that take place in our collective. And so if you're feeling any sense of apathy, if you're struggling to connect to the deep, emotional, passionate desire, demands, no other way but but advocating for peace, if you're struggling to feel the heart of that, it may be time for you to adopt a bear witness mentality. You may need to witness some of the footage that is coming out of Israel and Gaza. We have the footage. Um, and there is a lot of fake shit on the internet, but there are also good sources to view what is actually happening. I always recommend Breaking Points. They are kind of my favorite news organization here on YouTube. They're not mainstream, um, but I do really enjoy their perspective. So if you're if you're feeling any sense of apathy, if you're struggling to connect to the emotional importance of this, I would encourage you to consider bearing witness. Because again, it is extraordinarily important that when we as light warriors, as alchemists, as witches, when we choose a new path, we have to cement that into the rest of the collective. And that is a lot of weight on our shoulders, but it is also part of why we are here. And if it resonates with you at all, I would highly recommend dedicating quite a bit of your ritual time, quite a bit of your prayer time, quite a bit of your meditation time, not just passively saying, I want peace, but like really feeling into that. And the other thing that Stingray made me think of is the pressure from friends and family because, and I was naive to this until more recently, Speaking about this issue publicly is, holy shit. I did not realize how controversial it would be to say, I condemn both sides and I want peace. I, I The vitriol and the aggression around f trying to force you to choose a side over a conflict that many of us have been intentionally uneducated in throughout the years. The ways in which some of the comments and, you know, I've done a really good job cleaning up my social media and making sure that I'm only following people that I believe are fully ingrained in this new path that we're bringing into existence. But I've definitely seen some comments um, that try to simplify the entirety of the issue, try to button it up as though it is, well, it's obvious you choose this side. And I, uh, the beauty of Tower Time, the horror of it, but the beauty of it is that if you commit yourself to the old ways, you will always eventually look foolish. And I think this is one of the greatest examples of that because the reality of the situation we find ourselves in is one in which both of these two regimes that are at war with one another are extraordinarily gruesome and barbaric, both of them. So to side with either means that you're aligning yourself with a regime that, frankly, would kill you, um, but also is extraordinarily gruesome and barbaric in the ways that they choose to do so. Both sides, both sides. And also at the same time, both sides on the civilian front are completely innocent, have done nothing wrong and are being tortured. It is, uh, the temptation to simplify things and also the Western temptation to infantilize groups because we definitely also tend to do that, especially in America. We like, we love our, our heroes. We love our sympathetic, simplified, beautiful little caricature of a hero that we can prop up on and all rally behind. These two sides have an extraordinary amount of hatred and vitriol for each other. And it is not, while both populations of civilians are completely innocent and what is taking place is absolutely war crimes, atrocities, the worst of the worst, 
there is also a very pervasive sentiment within these two populations of hatred for the other. This is not simple. There is a very complicated energy that exists around this fight. And at the heart of it, it is the age old question of us versus them, dogmatism, my tribe versus your tribe. And it is escalated to the point of the holy ones versus the evil ones. Always. This is always how these conflicts arise. You saw this um, in previous election cycles in America. It was either, you know, you were either on our side and you're the good guys or you're the other side and you're not just wrong, you're evil. That's that is the level that we have taken these conflicts to. You know, the actions that have taken place from both of these two regimes are at this point, I think you could classify as evil pretty easily. And there are so many reasons for it. But again, I would like to focus on what we are supposed to be choosing instead. So I just cut, cut my deck here and I got the Seven of Cups. I think this is an energy that we will have to master in this time in order to bring forth a new way of being for our species is the ability to hold conflicting ideas as true at the same time within us. Interesting. This is one of the messages that came through with the whole Russell Brand situation. If you'll remember, I said, I think a part of this for us is our ability to hold two opposite conflicting narratives as true within us at the same time. The Seven of Cups is very much a, I'm not sure what I'm gonna get, but also you get out of it what you put into it. There is this look of uncertainty on the Seven of Cups' face. Having the spiritual maturity to see this situation as it is, requires the ability to be able to hold two conflicting narratives within you as true at the same time, and to understand that the oversimplified solution that we are often presented, especially here in America, is propaganda. It is extraordinarily overly simplistic, a black and white answer to put our little brains at ease. When we are spoon fed, a black and white answer. This is the side you choose. This is the reason why. Here's all this graphic imagery to validate that perspective. And we will conveniently ignore all the graphic imagery from the other side to only bolster this one perspective. We love simplified narratives. It makes something that is extraordinarily upsetting very easy to digest and navigate and process. A very clear directive from her for us, especially in America, is the directive to refuse, refuse to choose a side. And the reason for this, by the way, and it's not to say there's no action, we will get there in a second, but when you allow your consciousness to be swayed to choosing a side, no matter if you think you have bypassed propaganda and made the choice yourself, first of all, realize that doing so is extraordinarily difficult. Propaganda, we are really good at, what, at noticing the obvious propaganda, but if there is any propaganda that makes us feel good about our decision, we are extraordinarily susceptible to that. So keep that in mind, both sides of this have extraordinary amounts of propaganda swirling around right now. When we allow our consciousness to be convinced to choose a side, we are, first of all, as Americans, we almost always choose wrong. If you're looking for evidence of that, look at what we have done in the Middle East for the entirety of my life. How are those weapons of mass destruction looking, George? Um, so we almost always choose wrong, but also you will be, when you choose a side, you ultimately end up condoning the financing of carnage. America's involvement in anything geopolitical at this point is, is solely focused on carnage for the explicit purpose of profit. Everything that the American government is posturing about right now is postured about solely for profit. We have not helped a nation that we have invaded or bolstered in a war sense for the entirety of my life and long before that. From the American perspective, refusing to choose a side. Now, those members of our collective that are currently physically there, I think it is extremely important for us to not pass judgment on them because being in a physical situation 
watching the horrors that they have had to firsthand bear witness to. The weight on the collective shoulders to choose a new path is squarely on our shoulders because we have the luxury of time and distance from this. We have the luxury of space and it is up to us to utilize that space to mature and to grow and to see things from a higher perspective. The other thing I wanted to, and this is a little bit tactical and then we will get into some more cards here and maybe try to make things a little bit more uh, esoteric. So there were two other things I wanted to mention. First of all, terrorism is a self-feeding cycle. There are over a million children in Gaza and that are currently being brutalized and are watching their family be brutalized. They will almost certainly grow to adopt a terrorist-like mentality. They certainly will not be de-radicalized through this entire process. This is a process that you know, America has been contributing to for quite some time. Our actions in the Middle East created the perfect breeding ground for ISIS to exist. Terrorism is a self-fulfilling prophecy. It is a self-feeding cycle. And it is, if you're Big Daddy Boeing or Lockheed Martin, it is extremely good for business. There have been reports that Netanyahu um, knew about this attack you know, days, days, 12 days, I believe, before it took place. This has been confirmed by the Egyptian intelligence agencies and the American intelligence agencies. And I don't want to say he intentionally allowed it to take place, but I am saying that that government has had a desire to eliminate the Palestinian people for quite some time. There is also the question of centralization of power that we need to be considering at this time. Acts of terror are... You know, the old guard likes to say, never, never let a tragedy go to waste. Acts of terror are, <laughs> ah, I hate that I'm saying this, but acts of terror are perfect for their machinations. It serves their purpose perfectly because acts of terror are, as they are described, terrorizing. And when you are scared, you are susceptible, you are malleable, you are very easily tempted into escalating conflict. So the responsibility for acts of terror absolutely fall upon the heads and the shoulders of the terrorists. When we ask the question of shouldn't Israel be able to defend itself, I think there was an opportunity for Israeli officials, government leaders to defend themselves. And it seems quite clear that they intentionally chose not to defend themselves. And so when the question of what do we do next arises, I think we need to adopt, if, I don't want to infantilize this situation, but this was the analogy that Ariane Rod gave me earlier today. It's kind of like we're back in the schoolyard with the bullies and there are two children in front of us that are bullying one another. And our options now are to choose a side and fight alongside the bully or demand that both of them grow up and figure it the fuck out. And the uncomfortable reality about this path is that you cannot force other people to change their behavior. The only thing you have control over is what you choose to do. And so as Americans, our government now, they're not really listening to us all that much, to be clear. But let's assume that our sentiment guides what our government does. And ultimately, on a vibrational, in a vibrational reality, I do believe that. The more of us that hold a higher vision, you know, we will eventually create that in the collective. But on a governmental level, in a strategic sense. If America gets involved with either one of these two sides, we will be financing carnage. The conflict will only escalate and it will last for a very long time because the shareholders and the CEOs of Boeing, Lockheed Martin, and Raytheon are foaming at the fucking mouth right now and they have the majority of Congress bought and paid for. If America does anything other than stand firm on her own land and say, you guys figure it out, I'm not getting involved. Just to clarify a little bit further, what I mean by this is for America and other countries around the world, in fact, 
to leverage any power that they have in a geopolitical sense to demand that both of these two sides meet at the negotiation table and start peace settlements. Those have happened. Talks of peace settlements have happened in the past, and um, they've been very nuanced and fraught, and there's been a lot of corruption that has taken place throughout those. But that is what I mean when I say you two figure it out. I'm talking about specifically calling for peace negotiations. If we do anything other than that, we will not make it better. We never have. And again, the uncomfortable reality of that is your, you cannot control the actions of others. And in fact, in a twisted sense of humor, I suppose, from the universe, us staying out of this would be the ultimate way to respect the sovereignty of these two groups of people. Now, you know, when it comes to actions of assisting civilians, humanitarian aid, I think that's different. But when I say we shouldn't get involved, I mean from a strategic military sense. Um, and so we hold that higher vision here as light warriors. Regardless of what the government does, I think it is fair, fairly obvious that they have already sort of postured themselves in the direction they are planning on taking us as a country. But as I said, we have an election coming up. And which means currently we have a choice point in the collective of will you choose a side or will you choose a, d a higher path, a new path? This choice point will compound in the next American presidential election. We will be given an opportunity to make a choice that will determine how this conflict either escalates or is eventually resolved. Okay, let's get into some cards here. Now I'm gonna grab a couple of tarot cards and see if there are any additional messages that Ariane Rod would like me to share with you all. Okay, so the first card I got was the Five of Pentacles. I think this is a really good depiction and description of what the Palestinian people have been going through for quite some time. This is a depiction of being left out of resources, kept out of the, kept in the dark, kept outside of that which you need to be able to sustain yourself. The other card I got was the Seven of Swords. Someone is hiding something from you. And the way that we need to, when faced with the temptation to oversimplify this problem, we absolutely have to take a step back and see things from a higher perspective. The reality is, is that this entire event, this entire unfolding was orchestrated and it goes back much longer than just this particular attack, what happened in Israel being planned. The groundwork for this atrocity was laid long ago. What the Palestinian people have been going through in Gaza is nothing short of a humanitarian crisis, war crimes. When you treat a population of people as though they are subhuman and you torture them, essentially, you are creating the perfect breeding grounds for them to retaliate. And it is an unfortunate reality of human nature that when we are taken to our base level animal reality, when our Maslow's hierarchy of needs is squashed and we are stuck at the bottom of not even having, not even having the basics, we become the worst and most animalistic version of ourselves. This is where the nuance and the holding multiple realities is extremely important and extremely valid for the situation we find ourselves in. Another thing that Ariane Ron has been teaching me with this is that there is a difference between understanding cause and effect versus condoning actions. And I think that what Hamas did was so extraordinarily barbaric and extremely unhelpful for the actual Palestinian people and their freedom and their sovereignty. It um, it was not strategically a good de decision whatsoever. And on top of that, it is, it is horror. What they did was horror in the most true sense of the word. But there is also a component of cause and effect at play here. She's putting in my head now you know, this is interesting. I feel like this is an extraordinarily extreme example of something that we all also must grapple with because this us versus them mentality, we're all being primed to adopt it, all of us. Even if we are not seeing physical 
ramifications of this and in, in more of the Western world, we are all being primed and pushed and siphoned into a cause and effect cycle that creates an us versus them mentality. And the tapping on our shoulders, the higher thing that we are being called to do is to choose a different path. When we find ourselves stuck in that cycle of cause and effect, and the easiest thing for us to do is to default backwards into our animal programming and to fight back in a way that is not helpful, productive, and is certainly not going to accomplish the goal that we say we're setting out to accomplish. We are falling into the trap of the false promise of retribution. I was watching back my summer solstice channeling that I did and this, and I mentioned in that video, the temptation of retribution multiple times. And I said in that video, we were going to be confronted with many times throughout the remainder of tower time to be tempted into choosing retribution. And this is one of those moments. The other card I was given was the three of pentacles, teamwork. It's difficult and I don't wanna say easiest, but in truth, one of the most direct paths to circumventing, to pulling ourselves out of the cause and effect spiral that the old guard is trying to put us in is for us to come together, for us to realize that we are all on the same side, for us to link arms and to stand strong in choosing something new. One of the lies of dogmatic attachment is that your us versus them is defined by the group that you find yourself in, be it the religion, the country, the political movement, whatever it may be. It is a lie of dogmatism and us versus them that your us is the group you belong to. It's not. Your us is the entirety of the human collective and your them is anyone, anyone that would seek to deny that reality for you. Anyone that would tempt you into the false sense of security of retribution. Anyone that wants to keep you controlled, limited and stuck in the old narrative. Your us is so much bigger than we have been led to believe. And this is something we will need to not just conceptually understand, but we are going to need to feel this in a very concrete sense. The us being all of us needs to become experiential. Yeah. Clarity, go within. We'll talk about this in a second. Family, circles of life. Confirmation of what I was just talking about. Your family is so much larger. So much larger than what you, you perceive it to be. There is a real opportunity here with this conflict for everyone on planet Earth to come together and to verbalize both of you. Knock it off. Stop. Stop the barbarism, stop the dogma, stop the division, stop the extraordinarily hostile war crimes that are taking place. And again, another strategic point here, most of the leverage needs to be pushed from the Western world onto Israel because Israel is the, the actor in this that has the majority of the power. It was very interesting for me to observe the chokehold that the Israeli government seems to have on American politicians, because almost overnight, every candidate for president, especially and even the ones that had been calling for peace in Ukraine and Russia, all of the sudden changed their tune. And it wasn't just, you know, my condolences, my thoughts and prayers. It was, no, yeah, you should fuck this shit up. Like, go to war. What? Why, why are we doing that? Why are we... What happened? Um, I do suspect, mm, hmm, card number 45, because their eyes are closed and they are being led by something else. And card number 25, they are being manipulated by an unseen force. The sway of money and power, and I gotta tell ya, I don't know what this feeling is, but there is something specific about the relationship between America and Israel that feels it feels like we don't know everything as American citizens. There is something about this, certainly, obviously, establishment politicians are very greedy and would love to make a quick buck for their benefactors at Boeing. But there is something else taking place that feels even bigger than profit. And I, I, I don't I don't know I don't know what it is, but I did just want to verbalize that. There is an energetic chokehold 
on it where it wasn't, it was, everyone was so hasty and so quick to ignore the entirety of the situation and immediately advocate for increasing the hostility and violence. And it was just, it was something to witness and something to behold. And it jarred me. I'm not going to lie to you again. As I mentioned, I was a little bit naive to this entire situation before all of this took place. And my immediate reaction was, well, this is very complex. And also everything that has been going on seems wildly inappropriate to put it mildly on both sides. I was very jarred and shocked to witness people immediately and so cavalierly choosing a side with very little nuance to the way that they were choosing to articulate it. I was, I was shocked and I was, uh, I was shocked and I was also, I'm still a little confused by it. Again, I can understand if you like physically are there or if you have family members there, or if you're someone that has been working on, you know, the tension between these two groups of people for a long time, you're like, I've been do, I've been talking about this. No one's been listening to me. I can see all of that. But for the average removed citizen and or Marianne Williamson, RFK, what are you guys doing? What is this? What's happening? I think Marianne did a little bit of a better job navigating it. RFK, I'm going to talk about that when I do my channeling on the presidential election, but um, it was interesting to me and I did just want to verbalize that it feels like there is something more complex happening between America and Israel in a control sense. It doesn't feel like a partnership. It feels feels very much like they didn't have a choice but to verbalize that. And I would like to understand why. Let's um let's end here because I've been going on about this for quite some time. I want to end with a very grounded and centered message here. Clarity go within. As we face down the remainder of tower time, one of the most important skills we can adopt is the ability to slow things down, especially if you have the time and space to be able to do that. Again, the majority of this instruction from her is for those of us that have the luxury of time and space, those of us that are in the collective that are physically embroiled in what is taking place, they have less ability to control their own energy. I don't want to strip them of their power, but it is a simple fact of life that when your physical safety is in peril, are you able to control your thoughts as easily? No. And I think the majority of us understand that. So our primary focus is going to be to slow the energies down, dip into a sense of meditation, to go within, hold the higher vision, hold the line, hold the line. If you have any ability to verbalize your desire for creating a sense of peace and harmony within this space, I highly encourage you to do so and to hold the line. This is another one of those situations very similar to COVID where it seems like there's one appropriate narrative depending on what circle you run in. So any of us that have the ability to voice, nope, this one sanctioned narrative, no, <laughs> no, it's way more nuanced than that. And that is not what we're, we're not going to blindly follow the leader into another 20 year cycle of carnage. No. So the more of us that can verbalize that, the more space it will give to that idea and the more it will invite other people in. There are a lot of people that want to agree with us when we say peace is the only way forward, but they are too scared to allow that into their reality because they have been told they are all of these awful names if they say that. If they do anything other than this one thing, they're all of these bad words. So... Any ability that you have to make it clear to the remainder of the people in your life that, nope, actually there's a lot more nuance. There's many paths you can choose and choosing the path of peace is the highest possible path, is the most aligned path for where we are headed as a collective. It is what we are being tasked to do. You are helping to give permission to people that feel too scared to fully embody that. So, and the other thing, again, a reminder from Ariane Rod when we... When we desire peace, we must feel it so passionately. It must be something we give the entirety of ourselves to and the thing that we birth into existence. It is not passive. It is not, oh yeah, I think they should do peace. It is visceral 
tangible. There are tears, there is screaming and yelling and emotion. Whatever emotion you have access to, by the way. Sacred rage is absolutely something you can use in this time. Collective grief is another great emotion you can lean on in this time. But fully pouring yourself and your energetic vibrational output into that, that is how we create something new in our brain. And it will take a lot of us doing it multiple times. Let's start with this. Let's start with this. All right, guys, I will leave it here for today. Thank you guys for being here. I appreciate you sitting through this. I know that this is a very difficult topic of conversation to sit with. So I thank you for your maturity and I will see you in the next one.